Thursday, 12 May, year of our Lord, 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT, Red Pill Tamales, season number 14, capítulo numero, numero 165. We have a special guest today, brother. Yeah, we do. It was a surprise to me, uh, but it was very interesting. And it's interesting how it came together. The history of it was almost just as interesting as what he's doing. Yeah, Rob asked me before we recorded with uh, with uh, Daniel Levy, who is running. He's a candidate in the Idaho Republican primary for the U.S. House of Representatives. Rob's like, so how do you know this guy? I was like, I'm going to tell you on there. Yeah, it was good. No, it was good. Definitely. It, yeah. it was a curveball. Uh, and we could get uh, we get to have guests and we get to have um, a badass podcast. Thanks to all the members of the TIA, the Tamal Intelligence Agency. That's right. If you want to join the community, join the Discord and, and unpack and unlock all the weekly podcasts, hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. Join the community. When you go to a show and you see me live, just be like, member of the tia, my tia sent me. I'm an agent. And then you get special perks because, you know, we're making some special perks if you go, if you're a member of the tia. That's right. To the show. To give people FOMO. That, that way everybody else could be like, hey, I, I, I didn't get one. You got Not a member of the tia, bro. jump in. For sure. Commit. Pat- Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Legalized Freedom Tour coming in hot. Uh, next stop starting tonight starting tonight all weekend long i will be in arlington texas arlington improv ignore the website ladies and gentlemen people sending me screenshots and they're like at the arlington improv it says they're going to require masks untrue most of the staff don't wear masks fake news fake news it's the radical left with the propaganda just have a lazy uh, web designer yeah i don't know i I hope they can update that because people were like motherfucker i thought you were red pill bitch (laughs) Uh, after that, we're hitting New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th, Abilene, May 21st, Lubbock, May 22nd, Bryan College Station, May 28th, San Angelo, Texas, June 3rd, Odessa, June 4th at the Ector Theater. Come through, represent Austin, June 9th. A whole bunch of more cities. Hit up the website, chingobling.com. We also have Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, California, Ontario, California, Denver, Colorado, OKC, Chirac, Chicago, stand back, stand by, Phoenix, Arizona, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, and many more, chingobling.com, sass. Bro, we got an actual candidate in the Idaho Republican primary, U.S. House of Representatives. Yeah, and it's somebody that actually is familiar with our area. He was naming streets, and he had a business here, and he was doing what you were doing on that independent-ish back Man, in the day. Dog, I remember Dan when he had a grill. Really? Yeah, he looked like Paul Wall's twin. <laughs> I mean, when you see him on the Zoom call, just add more beard, add the grill. It's Paul Wall. Wow. What'd it do, baby? I don't uh, think we asked him why he moved. Did he just have other... I mean, he's from... He's originally from Idaho. Oh, okay. okay, uh, okay. I don't know like why he like maybe left Houston yeah. or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, he definitely has roots here. He was out here for a long time in like the heyday, golden era of uh, Houston hip-hop. Golden era indeed, man. And really cool t-shirt designs. If you guys get a chance, check out Algiers. Maybe do a, a Google search like Algiers Clothing. Yeah. And they were, he's a really good artist. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I forgot to check it out. For sure. Uh, yeah, man. So hopefully you guys um, enjoy this interview, this call in, did a quick hit, uh, catching up with the buddy. And, and it's interesting to hear about what issues you know people in other states other states yeah yeah and and just from like a marketing standpoint just hearing him talk about like his vision for idaho just kind of like man if you just boil that down and just kind of focus like i'm sure it'll cut through the noise of what the other candidates while they're slinging mud at each other and and buying up billboards and everything else you mess around kill it with a couple memes or something mm-hmm. where you know you know communicate to the parents and and uh, people that are concerned with everything yeah, no, I thought it was super, super cool, and I think we're going to have more people like that, not not just from other states, but other candidates. With the primaries happening, with the midterms coming up, hopefully we can book some people who are in these races and uh, can shine some light on things that you won't hear on mainstream media. Absolutely, yeah, man. So uh, without further ado, check out Daniel Levy, candidate in Idaho Republican primary for U.S. House of Representatives. If you're an uh, Idahoan, hey, man, go ahead and uh, check him out. Maybe you might want to vote for him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest on the line. This is RPT, Red Pill Tamales, all the way from Idaho, Boise, correct? Uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, technically. Okay, Sun Valley, my bad, brother. That's Uh, okay. We got my boy Dano, a.k.a. Daniel Levy. What's up, bro? What's going on, Chingo? Nice to see you, man. Yeah, man. So you're running for, what are you running for? 
for U.S. House representatives in um, District 2 of Idaho. Idaho has two districts, and uh, the place I'm in, Sun Valley, is in the southern part, and so southeastern Idaho is all one district, and then, like, northwestern Idaho is the other district. So, so to catch everybody up to speed as to, like, dude, I've known you forever. So, uh, so Dano, yep. I, know him from, I know him from the hip-hop world. So, yes, sir. Uh, so my boy Rob was asking me, so how do you know this guy? I was like, I'm going to tell you on there, man. I'm going to tell you on there. Uh, from the hip hop world, um, in the early 2000s, when, you know, I was running around doing my thing, uh, you know, Dan created this um, really cool clothing brand called Algiers, right? It was like a lot of hand, like hand drawn, like cool art, a lot of uh, like characters in different settings. And, you know, he had like the, the money bag logo with like the Z thing and, uh, collabs with artists like Zero and everybody else. You even had a uh, a brick and mortar like retail store. Yeah, in Third Ward, Houston. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we are right now. We're in Third Ward. Wow. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. Where Where was the store? On Scott Street, okay. kind of a little bit a little bit north of Old, uh, Old Spanish Trail. Okay. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Wow. Yeah. So, man. Uh, so, how'd you get into like hip hop clothing based out of Houston? Um. So I've always liked clothing. Um, when I was growing up, I was a huge fan of the brands like Carl Kanai and all the early stuff like that. I had some cross color stuff too, but I was really into Carl Kanai. And then um, at a certain point, I was, <clears throat> I went to actually to film school for graduate school at USC because I wanted to be a film director and make movies and stuff. Um, I even talked to you before saying that you would be so good at on uh, on doing a sitcom and stuff like that if you remember back when you were back when you were still in the cowboy boots and the and yeah. the hat and um, so I was at, at USC for film school I was doing videos for rappers making videos for rappers and stuff like that and I wasn't making money fast enough with the music videos. So I needed something else to pay rent. So I was like, man, maybe I can sell some shirts with my artwork. So I started selling shirts just around LA and then making phone calls to stores outside of LA. I was living in LA at the time. And um, the t-shirt the hustle just started popping off for me really quickly. It was just a blessing. And for whatever reason, Houston was the first city that really embraced it big time. Um, and that's why I opened the store in Third Ward is like, I was like, man, if I was like, I'm from Idaho, I'm living in LA, but Texas is showing me more love than any other place in the country or the world. So I was like, man, I got to do something to try to show that I'm dedicated to Texas the same way that they're showing me love. So I decided to open the store in Third Ward and have a physical presence because I wanted to, um, to show love back, basically. I, I mean, in many ways, in many ways, it was kind of like a Houston brand, even though you're not like oh, yeah. born here. But just yeah. because it was like in the nooks and crannies and uh, just the relationships and you being in the community, very mm -hmm. grassroots, every rapper wanted an Algiers collab. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was wearing Algiers. I mean, I, you know, that's back when we were dressing super fucking baggy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, props and, and kudos on that because, I mean, just very successful. Um, you know, you, you reached a lot of people, man. It, it, it was it was all over the place. Yeah, you and I were both on that same independent hustle. Like you were doing your thing independently and out there grinding and I was doing the same thing. Like we had a lot of the same like hustler, go get it yourself type of mentality doing our own thing. Like my stuff had like a unique vibe and your stuff had a unique vibe. Like I always, I always very like much identified with you in a way like that. You feel me? Yeah, we're, you know, independent hustlers. And, um, and then somewhere, somewhere along the way, I got red pilled and I just started noticing like, Mm -hmm. A lot of the Marxist stuff, like trying to, like the way a lot of, you know, people on the left always try to package victimhood and mm -hmm. everything was about marginalized of this and everything's just mm -hmm. super anti straight white male. And, yeah. um, and, and, you know, I started waking up to like how people are being used as like, as like, uh, pawns, really political uh -huh. pawns. And I, and I think you had reached out like, yo, I didn't know you were up on this kind of stuff. And I'm yeah. like, hey, I didn't know you were either. Yeah. I think we both got red pilled. Okay, so so this is Crazy. like a new, it's kind of a new journey for you as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was always a little, I always felt like I was like like a libertarian. Like I always felt like I was very much like in the middle. And I just wanted to get along with everybody and have good vibes and have positive feelings towards everybody. And like who wants to be like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. It doesn't feel good to be anti, anti, anti. Like you want to feel full of love, right? And joy. So I was like, okay, I'm a 
identify in the middle and have kind of like a freedom mentality. Um, and when when Trump first started getting on the scene, I, I I was a little bit hesitant. Like the mainstream media still had all. I mean, I hate to say it or admit it, but I was a little bit brainwashed by the media myself. And it took some of my friends that were like more more uh, advanced as far as being aware of what's going on to be like kind of pointing things out. Um, <clears throat> like one of my, I have a friend. One of my friends uh, is a Puerto Rican kid or got, I shouldn't say kid, a man. I've known the guy since I was kids. That's why I say kid. But one of my really good friends who's Puerto Rican was like the first one to be telling me like, you know, Hillary is horrible. Trump is the much better option. And he, I was like, I was like, what about the racism? He's like, man, he's like, you need to he's like, just think about it and really go back and observe and listen to what they're saying. And he's like, I don't think I don't think that Trump is nearly the racist he's being portrayed as. And it opened up my mind. And I was like, OK, OK, let me go back and reevaluate this whole thing. And I, I started to really realize how like horrible and evil the media is like mm -hmm. they really, really lie. They, I, I couldn't believe how much they lie when I really got down to observing it and trying to think clearly and not trying to just like. I don't know, just not trying to be so much like I'm, I don't know what the word for it is. Like, I just trying to be in the middle, but I was really listening to what they're saying. I really started to see how evil the media is. Like, I can't believe how much they lie and twist everything to their left, their leftist Marxist agenda. It's really, really crazy when you start to see it. You can't, you can't unsee it at that point. Yeah. Same here, brother. Uh, what are some issues that uh, Idahoans, is that right? Did I say that? Idahoans? Right? Yeah, yeah. Idahoans. Yeah. Idahoans. <laughs> I think uh, for a little while I was a part of the tribe of Idahoan. Um, I so, so <laughs> what, are, what are some issues like that Idahoans like that as, you, as you're out there meeting folks? Like, what do they have to say? What are they worried about? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one. I, I, now that I entered myself as a candidate, I do get like random postcards in the mail from constituents telling me what they're interested in, and that by far the two postcards I get in the mail the most are. To, to support the pro-life agenda. And also the other one I get is to support the, 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 the anti-unionization agenda. Like, I, I guess there's a lot of Idahoans that they call it the right to work agenda, like the right to work where they do not want to be forced to join a union just to have a certain job. And that's something that I get a lot of postcards about, but I hardly hear people talking about that on the media. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting one to get. Uh, Texas is a right to work state, correct? Did you hear that, Dan? Yeah, you're asking me about Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would imagine so. Texas is very, uh, Texas and Idaho are both very conservative and they both tend to be like that. Okay. Dan, I don't, what, I don't know for sure. what got you into, so what was the pivot from what you were doing prior to being this candidate to, to being the candidate? I mean, like, why did I start to run, basically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think... I, I, you know, I, I listen to a lot of people that are that are conservative people on the on the on the internet, and I, I was listening to one guy on his writing. I think it might have been Mike Cernovich, okay. um, at Cernovich on Twitter. And one of the things he said that I thought that really struck with me was he was like, he's like, it's amazing how many of these really red states have candidates that don't push the envelope to the right. He's like all these liberal states have like New York have AOC who are really pushing this agenda to the left as hard as they can. But then you have states like Wyoming, Idaho, West Virginia, who are super red states, but their candidates don't show that like the candidate that I'm running against. Uh, I just call him the incumbent. If you look up his statistics on govtrack.us, it lists him as one of the 15 most left wing Republicans in the whole country in office. But he comes from a state that's by far red. Like he doesn't need to be like there are even some Democrats on the on that chart. There are even some Democrats that are more conservative than he is. It doesn't make any sense. Like he voted for all the regime change wars that the Bush family pushed with their lives. And now he's voting for all those regime change wars in um in the Ukraine. And I'm totally against all that. Like I feel like America should be a hundred percent focused on America and just trying to make America the best country it should be. Like I, I don't even see why we give any tax money at all to any foreign countries that that does i can't wrap my mind around that like why do we why do you and i have to pay taxes and then this tax money is going to the ukraine or any other country too you could name a, like there's a huge list of them and some people get pet peeves about these certain countries like all oh, these like countries shouldn't get this money but i don't think any of these countries should get this money like if they if people want to donate their money to 
to the Ukraine or Israel or whatever the country is, like let them do that with their own private money. Like, they, they, like let them do that with like their own pocket money. That doesn't need to go from our tax money. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. That's one of the issues I care about a lot. Yeah, I agree, man. Idaho first. Yeah. Uh, so, so it sounds like USA so, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like the incumbent that you're up against, like just controlled opposition, super rhino. This yeah. person is yeah. not ultra MAGA. No, no, not at all. No, he, he, he even said Donald Trump was not fit to be president. And now he's on his campaign ads. He says, I'm pro Trump. But when Trump first ran, he was like, no, Trump is not fit to even be in office. Like, how are you going to like, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Well, it sounds well, one, like. Uh -huh. I said one, thing. one other issue I, I really care about, too, is the education issue. And I, I think that the whole education system needs to be just like, I, be, I believe in school choice to the, to the nth level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like any parent should have the right to take their portion of the tax money that's raised for education and spend it on whatever they want. Like if it's homeschooling, spend it on homeschooling. If they want to hire private tutors, hire private tutors. If they want to put their kid in private school or charter school or religious school, whatever they want, they should do that. I feel like the monopoly on the public school system is one of the biggest things that holds our people back. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a big, uh, that's a big conversation. It's very important because of the amount of woke stuff uh the amount of like these uh over sexualization like mm -hmm. these some of the books in the libraries uh, mm -hmm. my wife has a podcast she had a guest on where this lady uh htx kids first mm -hmm. on, on instagram uh she's a concerned parent taxpayer and she goes up to those um you know the student board meetings and and is you know calling for um you know the, the left tries to flip it into like the conservatives are book banning you know they're banning books and it's like no yeah. it's like a bunch of porn in these yeah. little fourth grade libraries it's, it's you wouldn't i wouldn't have believed that when i was a kid that they're doing it like that it's insane yeah man there, there's definitely a radical agenda at play and it, it sounds like um a lot of what you stand for is going to resonate with I hope so. man i appreciate you saying that bro yeah, I mean, because if the alternative is like a, a never Trumper rhino who yeah. who is like super left and and, you know, I've, I've been to Idaho a few times and and yeah, I can it totally strikes me as like most of it being conservative. Mm -hmm. um, what are the exceptions with like oh, my Idaho? county? I live in the exception. That's the crazy thing. I live in a county called Blaine County, which is super leftist, libtard, crazy <laughs> Democrat county and like i don't even usually talk about politics too much to most people because the people here are so left like i don't when i go to the grocery store i'm not talking to people about politics most of the time unless i see they're wearing something that indicates that they're you know more, more on the right but like yeah my, my county is super left it's crazy to see all the ideas the local politicians push are always bad leftist ideas it's really crazy to me to like i, I live in the one liberal county in a huge red state so like when i've been running a lot of the local republican groups in other counties are been like they're kind of even surprised that i'm running because they think like everyone in my county is left yeah you got to go in the belly of the beast man and um a lot of times traditionally republicans they're afraid to misspend funds by mm -hmm. going into like the rio grande valley or like oh that's very minority or uh, there's a bunch mm -hmm. of Mexicans down there. They're not going to want to hear what we got to say. And you'd be surprised only because yeah. like, in the example I just gave, I mean, a lot of Latinos are kind of like not pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. They're more pro-life. Oh, yeah. There, my, my, my dad showed me an article when I was a teenager. I think it was from the Wall Street Journal. And it was an article discussing political values of urban youth. And it was this article where they went into the hood and they showed all these young, you know, when they're saying urban, you probably imagine that they're black. So you're showing all these young black kids um, like questionnaires, asking them questions like, do you believe in abortion? Do you believe in school choice? And they didn't talk about the political parties at all. Like they just did this whole thing where they went issue by issue by issue and on almost every issue the urban youth all agreed with the conservative principles and the conservative values which was like it opened my mind it always has stuck with me ever since I was like a teenager it was like 30 years ago I read this article but it was saying basically that on all the all, all the individual issues 
like the urban youth actually agree with the conservative ideas because they're simpler and they make sense. But somehow in the education system, they get pushed into thinking that Democrat party is the, is the party that you go to if you're not a racist, which is crazy. And then when you really look at the ideas of the Democrat party, they are far more racist. Racist as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable when you really look at the issues. I think that might be the best way to red pill people is to like have a, a simple questionnaire about like mm -hmm. different policies, like whether like education, economy, things of that nature. And mm -hmm. at the end, just be like, oh, congratulations, you're a Republican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's crazy, man. So when are, when are these uh, elections happening? In a week from today. Okay. And uh, also you mentioned that uh, you sent a, uh, a FedEx letter to Trump to see if he- Yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> So I need to get that. Rec that rec I said I need to get a public recommendation. Otherwise, I'm not going to win. These other guys. There, there's five people in the race that I'm in, and the top two have millions and millions of dollars that they're spending with these hate hate ads on TV back and forth. And I, I, I've spent less than just just barely barely any money on on mine because this is my first time ever running for public on office, and it's been more of a learning experience than anything, to be honest. Yeah. Does any of your like creative brain and like the marketing side uh does it has has any of that kicked in like can you a little me? bit a little bit i think if i were to do it over probably more so like just making ads and stuff like i already had a little bit of graphic design or should say a little bit i have a graphic design experience so i mean i could make ads and stuff like that but i didn't make any video ads i, I, I just didn't i was behind I, I submitted my candidacy in like in the last 15 minutes that you're possible to do it like i drove over to boise and took my paperwork to the secretary of state and dropped it off with like with literally like 15 minutes left to go in the period where you can submit yourself so i got into the whole thing late the other people have been you know months in advance planning and so my my thing was kind of like fly by the fly by the seat of my pants trying to figure out how to do it and it's a little bit there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that i haven't i didn't know anything about so it's definitely been a learning experience if i were to do the marketing again the next time i think i would have a lot more video ads tv ads and I think I will make my ads like much more positive on about the ideas that I stand for. Cause I can't believe how many of these other ads I see on TV, all they're doing is saying hateful things about the other person claiming that guy's not a real Idahoan vote for me. I'm the real Idahoan is like, <laughs> that, that, like, that doesn't go anywhere. Cause they're both saying that. Yeah. You could probably whoop their ass with some good ass memes. <laughs> <laughs> I need to, I need to. Right. What's the, hey, what's the landscape out there as far as uh, how much competition do you have or how many, yeah, does the incumbent have? How much competition? Well, in this primary, there's five people. Um, three of the people are not, I don't, so myself and two other people, I don't see very many ads for. I've run some ads, but not very many. And so the incumbent has one other main person that's spending a lot of money that is, that they're saying these hateful things back and forth. But this is like the real election in Idaho, like. The, the November election for the federal positions doesn't really mean anything like the Republicans are going to win everything on the ballot in November. So when it comes down to real change, it's really like the primary um, election that would, that would bring the change. So like, I'm figuring, I'm, I'm, I feel like this is like a learning experience and like maybe in two years when the, the next go around, I would be able to do a much better job. What have you learned so far as far as trying to advertise, uh, you know, a campaign on social? If you're, or did you, let me ask you, did you advertise on social media? Not with paid advertising. I just, I opened a Twitter account for my campaign, twitter.com slash real Dan Levy. And um, I've been using that to, to tweet and stuff, but um, I, I, th I th I'm not sure that Idahoans are that much up on social media. Cause like even right. the incumbent guy only has 2000 Twitter followers. It's not like, these famous people like AOC that have millions and millions of, you know, lackeys and followers following them. Like it's pretty low key out here as far as, as that goes. Like if I were to do it again, I think I would concentrate still more on TV ads and stuff like that. Makes sense, man. Yeah. Hopefully I can make it out to Boise uh, again soon. I, I performed it at the uh, knitting factory. Yeah, bro. We sold it out. Had the, uh, the, ba this is a long time ago. Yeah. The balcony was to the gills, like the whole man. When you did your the knitting factory, was the audience like a lot of white people too, or was it like mostly Latinos? Or what? it was mostly Latinos, yeah. Yeah, Idaho has become super Latino. Like when I was growing up here, uh, I don't remember hardly any kids in my elementary school being uh, Latino. But like now, my county and most of Idaho is about about a third Latino. Like the Latino population here has has skyrocketed. Man, you you worried about the wrong endorsement, brother. 
<laughs> I, need, I need that chingo bling endorsement. I need the tamale <laughs> vote. Yeah. Hey, we'll have you in a taco truck wrap with your face on it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. <laughs> I, my, my grandmother uh, on my dad's side was born in Chihuahua. There you go. Oh, wow. There you go. Right. With Mexican roots. Yes, sir. Only one candidate <laughs> speaking for Idaho. Dude, I could see that ad next go around. You got to make something super like we see a lot of these conservatives make a pretty like similar ad. You know what I'm talking about? Where they try to speak Spanish. Nosotros, un Idaho para todo. El Martillo, Tejano. El Martillo. Man, you know, yeah, you know, I need to get Chico. I need to do some meme videos with you. I could hire you as a uh, as a meme celebrity for, for videos for ads. That would be amazing. That'd be funny. Vota por mi amigo Daniel. Oh my gosh, that would be like the, the truth about that is that would it actually might work, bro? Because like I don't see any of the other Idahoans going for that market, and like the, the Latinos here are conservative, and there's like like it's about a third of the population right now, and the other candidates are not are not focused on that. Wow. I, that would actually be that would actually be probably a lick. Yeah, man, let's 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 do something. That'd yeah. be funny. I'll, yeah. I'll send you what I'll send you whatever you need. I know it's last minute, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean. It, it's a win-win either way because, you know, like you said, if you decide to run, you know, first of all, we don't know what's going to happen, right? right? It's still days away. Uh, Trump might open up that letter. Dude, that would be crazy. You know, Dude, my endorsement, imagine. my endorsement might help move the needle. The who it might come through, you know, uh, you know, one of my characters, somebody. But, uh, but, no, but like what I'm saying is you start to get that name recognition. It's almost like mm -hmm. branding and uh, in all that community outreach, you know, just goes a long way, especially acknowledging, you know, communities that have, are getting ignored. Do you have any other uh, colleagues that maybe are also running for office or any kind of political positions? Uh, not, not, not currently. My, my mother was the mayor of my town. Oh, wow. um, when, when I was growing up, my, before, before I was born, my mother served as city councilwoman in two towns, Sun Valley, Idaho, and Ketchum, Idaho. And then when I was in high school, um, there was some weird stuff going on with our local hospital that my mother didn't agree with. So she ran for for mayor and she stopped the um the weird stuff where the the previous mayor had decided to give like there was a unique situation where my town owned its own hospital and the previous mayor before my mother decided to give away the hospital which was an asset but maintain the debt of the hospital on the city's books which was technically technically illegal to do wow. so um my mother ran for mayor and that was her her only campaign promise was like i'm gonna stop this and it was really crazy to see how much hate came her way when like she got elected by far more people voted her for her than the other person and um she only had one campaign issue so she got elected on that issue that the people wanted her to do she stopped it within a year where they, they still gave away the hospital but they gave away the debt too so she stopped the one thing in a year that she said she was going to do and like the the local politicians were like they would come by her office and tell her all this mean nasty stuff like it, I, I saw like even on a small town level how much hate there is like I see why people don't want to get into politics because there's so much hate and negativity in it and there's the rewards are not really that that like mm -hmm. they don't like the, the, the I don't know it's just very it's just very hateful it's crazy even on a small town level oh man yeah try try being Mexican-American having a red pill tamales podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm proud of you man that's, that's very that's very very cool yeah man it takes what do you think it takes yeah, cojones. cojones. And what do you think about those Spanish counties at the bottom of Texas where they're becoming like red pilled, like, like, yeah, by, by crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Rio Grande Valley, all the border towns, uh, they've had a belly full of these, uh, these policies that they have, right? So they feel the brunt of it. Um, a lot, I think most, most of the U.S. Border Patrol are like Mexican American. So it's like a very diverse, um, organization department, I guess. And um, so, yeah, you know, they've been demonized, demoralized, and people are tired of it. They're starting to see through the bull crap. And my, I don't want to use the word transition because, you know, 2022 transition. <laughs> not a you're transitioning into you cut the tamale off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cut the, no, the, the tamale is still there. Get the torta. <laughs> yeah, no torta. It's all tamale. Uh, but yeah, like, I feel like me opening my eyes has happened in conjunction with like around the same timeline. And it's always like, it's weird because it's like the Rio Grande Valley has always been like a, um, just a place where I've always gotten a lot of love. I mean, they totally mm -hmm. get it. It's like Chingo Bling. That's like the most Rio Grande Valley type of idea, <laughs> yeah. right? It's yeah. almost like I am a border town as, uh, you know, personified mm -hmm. in a way, right? Um, so 
it's cool that um it kind of just is happening. It's like I'm on trend with the way a lot of Latinos. That's where the trend is headed. We got that. Thing. Yeah, that's where the trend is headed. Um, although you know the people that want to do hit pieces about me and everything, they they just don't get it. Yeah, it's amazing how many of to me how many of like the most important and the smartest people on the right actually started their political thinking like hardcore left, not even like left, but like Marxist. One, my, my, one of my favorite writers is Thomas Sowell. Oh, yeah. um, and he started off his political journey as like an open Marxist, even after he went to Harvard uh, Business School, I believe, like he was a Marxist. And then eventually he just slowly but surely was like, man, all these ideas that I'm, I'm in favor of, I'm wrong about. And he did, became super hardcore conservative. The same thing happened with the writer um, David Horowitz. Like he was, he was like uh, supported the Black Panthers. He like helped them to get their headquarters. And like, like at a certain point, he realized that he's all these leftist ideas I'm pushing are not just wrong, but like I'm, they're actually wicked. Like I need to, I need to change. Like there's, there's so many more really smart people that started off on the left and then swung to the right versus the other way. Like you hardly see any people that go from right to left. And if they do, they're usually like people you wouldn't have that much respect for anyway. Like, David Horowitz, what, what, what kind of stuff does he write? Um, he's written a lot of books. Um, one re he wrote was called, the rec one recent one was called Blitzed. It was about how he predicted Trump was going to win the most recent election. Um, but he was like a, a follower of the Saul Alinsky um, playbook. Like he was like the rules for radicals. Yeah. Like he used, he used to write books preaching to the left about how to, how to enact the Saul Alinsky playbook and like how to be a real hardcore radical. And then he, one of his friends was murdered by the people he was supporting. Like this lady that he had as a, uh, that he had gotten hired for the Black Panthers as a secretary for them, the, the group actually murdered her. And so that was like an open, like a wake up call to him. And like, he just basically got his friend murdered like by vicariously in a way. And so it made him like start to question what he started doing. Like if you read his stuff and watch his videos on the YouTube now, like he's very, very vehement. Like he's like hardcore conservative. Cause he's like, I was hardcore on the left. Like I know how wicked they are. Like the things that they're saying publicly what they say privately, I he's like I know by my personal experience is ten times more hardcore. Like the stuff that that's that's in the public conversation is only what they want to show to the public. What they really want to do is way way more secret and more private and way more wicked. So so your vision for Idaho, what what would you you know whether you're in charge or someone else, uh, regardless, like what what would your what would be your ideal vision for the future of Idaho? Well, the main thing I would I would want is the freedom of school choice like idaho already has a good amount of school choice like it's one of the best places to homeschool but the money that is raised for the for public education the money that is raised for education it still all goes into the public school system like i i really feel like the 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 way to help our country is to is to liberate that i would love to see idaho as like want to like to take that even to the next level as far as school choice i think that would be that would be great um, I would love to see Idaho have way, way fewer taxes. Um, like Texas is good like that. Like you guys are better. Like you guys have no personal income tax, I believe. Right. Like Idaho still has that. Like, I think that Idaho needs to be more like Texas in that regard. Um, I would like to see, we already have constitutional carry, so that's good. Um, but the, the main thing I would focus on is on an Idaho level would be the education. So, so would Idaho. you would you go as far as saying that like Idaho's educational system is broken, tainted? I mean, it's, it's not as bad as like it's not as bad as like a Baltimore, you know what I mean? But I, I just don't I just don't think it's fair that that the, there's a mon I don't think monopolies are generally good. Like I don't want to see a monopoly on education. Like I don't I just feel like m more parents should have the right to to go to different schools like. For the rich people, like they can send their kids to private school, right? Like there's no, they, can, they have the money to do it. But for middle class and poor, poor families, like why, why don't they get to have the option to go to, to whatever school they want? Like why is money standing in the way of their kids? Like a lot of the, like it, like in the, the school system here in Idaho is very liberal, even though it's a conservative state. Like even back when I was growing up, the teachers would openly push 
Democrat ideas on the kids. And that was in the 90s. And it's got even worse. Like the, the three big universities in Idaho, Boise State, Idaho State, and University of Idaho, they all got basically in trouble for pushing and indoctrinating their kids with the CRT nonsense. And they got, they got penalized where they had money taken away from their budget for, for pushing it so hard. But like the, the, the people here deserve to have more, ch more choice. Uh, do you follow Corey DeAngelis at all? Man, that name sounds really familiar. I know I've seen that person on Twitter, but I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head yeah. what I remember seeing. Yeah, so uh, maybe I'll send you a, a CC you on a tweet or something. But uh, Corey DeAngelis, I think that's his name. I don't know if I'm mis mispronouncing. Is it a black guy? Yeah, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure from the picture. Uh, but but basically, he's he's all about like the school of choice, and and he's always tweeting about like you know, this school district in this state just voted for, you know, uh, for the tax dollars to follow the child. And, yeah. Follow the child. That's how it, that's how it should be. Like I remember there's a libertarian guy, uh, what's his name? Larry Sharp that was running for governor of New York. And his idea was that I really liked was that any, any kid's family that wanted to pull their kid from school, from the school system, they should get half the money that would have been spent on them in the public school system, that money should just be sent to the family as a check um, without with no questions asked for them to do whatever they want. Like, I, I like that idea, but I feel I, like it should I, yeah. be 100%. Yeah, kind of like the way we do Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how much money goes to these other countries. Uh, uh, I don't know if people know, people listening, but Ukraine is the, the third most corrupt country in the world. You could take a globe, spin mm -hmm. it. Chances are the country you land on is gonna be less corrupt than Ukraine. They got all the oh, yeah. uh, the oligarchs over there the, making that money. The guy, the the president Zelensky, uh, he, he was he was outed a couple of years ago. I think what they call it that Panama Papers thing, where he was um, found to have millions and millions of dollars overseas outside of the Ukraine and in real estate in London and all these things under under shell company names and stuff like that. Like all like you no, know, the media doesn't pay any attention to to that aspect of Ukraine. And I'm I i do not know how is it in Houston? Like when I'm driving around in Idaho right now, like I see homes and businesses flying the Ukraine flag that don't even have the USA flag. Are you seeing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I see it. Uh there's a storage unit that that we use and right across the street there's like condos. Big ass Ukraine flag. You'll see the flags, the Ukraine flags in front of some houses. You'll see the stickers, uh, billboards. Yeah, you'll walk into like boutiques or like clothing type places and they'll have like a little area. Where it's like, hey, this is the Ukraine shirt that we're selling and all the funds and stuff like that. And, you know, we feel for the Ukrainian people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the poor, the innocent women and kids that are now becoming refugees due to Joe Biden's leadership, in essence, because. Mm -hmm. Putin didn't want no smoke with trompitas, papi trompas, a.k.a. faux fifth. Didn't nobody <laughs> want no smoke. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, really great to reconnect with you. Uh, hey, you have my endorsement. I love everything you stand for. Unfortunately, I'm not a citizen of Idaho, so I cannot, uh, you know, maybe I could drop off some ballots and they, uh, ah. maybe I could do a little uh, ballot trafficking a la 2000 mules. <laughs> 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 Dan, Dan's like, yeah, Susan, not gonna, uh, not, we're gonna touch that one. Hey, Dan, before, uh, allegedly. We let, before we let you go, though, yes, allegedly, all alleged, all for comedy jokes. This, hey, I'm a comedian, ladies this and gentlemen. Comedy podcast, yeah, but we talk about real subjects. Uh, any any take on the ultra MAGA moniker that we have? We now have, I guess, now. I don't know. I guess it's just funny that the, the left is using that as like a slogan to indicate something like hardcore negative, And then everybody on the right just thinks it's so funny. Yeah. That's how all these memes go, right? Is all these negative things or the supposedly negative things get thrown at the people on the right. And then the right people actually embrace them. And then the, then all these fact checkers try to say, see it, it's proof that they're racist. It's proof that they're evil. They're all white supremacists. You should put that in your commercial. You like, should. Idaho's only ultra MAGA candidate. <laughs> the only candidate endorsed by Chingo Blue. You should do that. That's true. That's you true. Both of those things today. The, ladies and gentlemen, the ultra MAGA candidate. Man, we need we need more people like you running in all 50 states yeah. who, are, who are care who care about what's going on in our own backyards, in our own states, the things that affect our citizens, especially right. when it pertains to education, the youth tax dollars and things of that nature we need more people like dan levy uh, uh running all across america 
Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Chinga. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Chinga. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Yeah, brother. Proud of you. Uh, and yeah. we're going to be keeping an eye on that race. And uh, definitely. I'm man, proud of you for the co for the comedy and the red pilling. Both those things are amazing. I, I love I love seeing it. Thank you, brother. Heck yeah, man. So yeah, uh, we got your back and uh, we'll be in touch for sure. Okay, that's a bet. Take thank, care, brother. Thank you, brother. Peace. Right, 100. For sure.